This is Rev. Dr. Torres Hiller from a place to consider.com. This week, I want to bring a special blog and a podcast series to you regarding the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who passed away September 18, 2020, last week. I decided to write on a topic she was very influential in discussing as a Supreme Court justice abortion. I was inspired by her testimony and the many things she had to say. And so abortion, a controversial debate in both Christianity and society in general, I decided because of this, I speak from my position as a woman and as a reverend. And so I welcome anyone to listen if they have an open mind and a forgiving heart. Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In the spirit of moving in courage, I ask these questions. What offense is worse, murdering your children, your child, before life fully manifests, or bringing life and then never offering security, stability, or love, because your choice was made to avoid penalty? One still commits a crime when a child is hungry, abused, or traumatized because one didn't have the means or mental capacity to give birth. It is still a crime when one cannot see the parenting process through. At what point is the refusal to be a parent not a crime? As a society, do we fairly discuss or consider the ramifications of keeping children we cannot keep or having children when women are raped, have medical issues, and are violated, tortured, or trafficked? What rights do the latter have regarding abortion and women's rights? I truly wonder if this topic is magnified solely because it is either morally and biblically wrong or also due to the additional culture and societal shame we place upon it. It's insidious to believe that God never considered the act of abortion. It may not be mentioned in the Bible, but God knows all. Every sin we commit as human beings has a cost, and living with the choice of abortion is a life sentence. Having the other people criticize, degrade, or trying to prove a point by quoting Bible verses doesn't lessen the blow or moves a person closer to a moral and just life. Instead, the condemnation of others pushes these women further away from God and his teaching. This decision, taking away the rights of abortion, has far greater ramifications in society than a decision in morality. It is a premise of patriarchy, and in my opinion, is based on a system that encourages controlling the decisions of women. Being pro-life, and all lives matter does not mean as much if you do not support people in every stage of their life from its beginning to death. You cannot support life and support killing a black person on the street. You cannot support life and leave children in cages at the border. If the decision to vote against abortion had the sole Christian intention of protecting a life, then other Christian values like clothing the poor, feeding the hungry, and curing the sick would also be supported because all life is valuable. However, you do not see many politicians today voting for those measures. As Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said, this is something central to a woman's life, to her dignity. It's a decision that she must make for herself, and when government controls that decision for her, she's being treated as less than a fully adult human responsible for her own choices. Having the right to an abortion is not a license to commit murder. It is a license to choose. Yes, sin is sin, and once one commits a sin, it is difficult to take back, to get back to a better space. But the decision to choose is not just about morality, because if it were, then you would rest easy at the fact that the decision is between women and their maker. People commit sins every day. Some are legal and some are not. Yet those that sin will have consequences that they will live with for the rest of their life. You cannot save someone from sinning, but you can support her by making their choice safe regardless. There are many heroin addicts in our country, and you cannot prevent them from taking drugs, but you can give them resources, for example, clean needles, Narcan in case they overdose, and cleaning materials, so that these addicts can stay safe and alive. That is truly pro-life. Women deserve that same support, taking away the right to abortion will only prevent safe abortions and kill women in the process. Even if you do not agree with their beliefs, 
giving women the proper resources to abort safely will keep them alive. Refrain from judgment, please. Keep an open heart, an open mind, and support to those that have to make this tough decision, for you might bring them and yourself closer to God in the process. I pray that this message allowed you to consider another perspective so the next time you see a woman and she is troubled in this decision that you would consider to be positive. God bless you and shalom.